All right, so let's go ahead and get your Zoom profile set up. If you are following the instructions in order, then you've probably already set up your profile where you've changed your image. You could have set a personal meeting ID. It gives you 10 digits randomly, but you can set them up. And since 10 digits are the numbers of a phone number, I've set up just to be my office line. And then your personal link, and this is the most important part on this page. The personal link will allow students to join your room without it being scheduled. Because it would be a nightmare for you to schedule each and every one of your classes every day and then have students join that specific scheduled link. This will allow you to, or allow them to basically join a, a chat room. And this link never changes. You just give this link out to your kids and they can join your room when it's time for them to join. And then you can see that uh, you have a capacity of 300 members per room, which is more than you'll ever need. We also had you set up the meetings. So under the meetings, we had meetings and then personal meeting room. And here's where you set up a couple of things um, just based on some different meeting options here. Okay. Now, in addition to this, you have a plethora of settings for you to choose from in order to manage your uh, Zoom experience. I'm going to go through some of the ones that I've chosen and um, explain why I've chosen these and then you can feel free to choose those same ones or whatever based upon your liking and your own personal preferences. So the settings we're going to focus on are the meeting settings and in particular when you select meeting there are two in meeting tabs that we're going to look at. I'm not going to worry so much about the schedule meeting tab because we're not really scheduling meetings in Zoom. We're going to have that um, that personal meeting room link, right? So I'm going to start with the in meeting basic and then move on to the in meeting advanced. And then that should take care of the settings that we need to configure for our Zoom experience. So starting with the in meeting basic, when I select it, it'll fast forward me there. Some things that I've selected and why. So I've selected chat, that way they can chat to each other on the back end while I'm presenting, right? It also allows them to text, uh, especially if I want them muted, it allows them to still participate without them interrupting what I'm saying. However, I've disabled private chat because I don't want them sending private messages to each other. I have enabled auto saving chats, that way I can uh, save them and I can go back and review them later. I've disabled play sound because that'd be kind of annoying as if I'm presenting and suddenly I hear these chimes going in and out when people are joining and leaving. I've enabled file transfer. Now it's best practice to probably put these files in Google Drive or PowerSchool Learning and send them out to your students ahead of time. But on the fly, if uh, you realize something that you need to send to a student while you're presenting, right, um, this will allow you to send that file via the chat window without leaving the Zoom meeting. Okay. Uh, feedback to Zoom, I leave this on just in case I need to send them some feedback about some troubleshooting issues, but I've disabled the end of meeting experience survey. I don't have co-host enabled, but if you are co-teaching with um, maybe a resources teacher, right, or a, st a strategies teacher, you can do a co-host, and that way both of you can join the meeting as a teacher role. I have enabled polling. Um, this will allow you to create multiple question polls that you can deliver via the Zoom message. And then you get those results afterwards. Um, allowing host to put attendee on hold. This is basically saying I can kick students out of my room. <laughs> I can put them on hold, right? Uh, in case they're being disruptive, I can select the student and then put them on a hold, right? Put them in timeout. Uh, always show the meeting control toolbar. This is pretty important in terms of getting started with Zoom. Uh, what, if you don't have this selected, then after a while, that that control bar will be hidden. Right? It'll kind of like, uh, it'll dock itself. Uh, this prevents it from docking, so that way you can always see the controls at any point in time. Uh, screen sharing, this is also very important. So I'm allowing host and participants to share their screen. So when I'm presenting, I can share my entire screen. I can share just a particular window I have open. If I have an iPad plugged into my laptop, right, I can actually share the screen of my iPad. So there's lots of different ways for me to share settings here. You can share files through Google Drive. You can share websites. And I'm going to allow students to do the same thing. So if they need to share their screen, um, then that'll give them an option to do so. Okay. Uh, who can start the sharing? me. I don't want students saying, oh, I'm going to share my screen now. Beep. No, I'm, I'll say, yep, you can share your screen. Right? 
I also have annotation tools. So as I'm sharing my screen, I can use pen tools and eraser tools and arrow tools and so forth to uh, mark up what it is that I'm sharing. Very cool, this is a whiteboard, right? So you can actually uh, launch a whiteboard and be able to mark up on it. This is probably most useful if you're running your Zoom lesson or launching your Zoom from an iPad. So from an iPad, you can actually share a white pad and be able to mark up on it. But if you're on your MacBook or PC and you're launching a Zoom meeting, you can also do a, a whiteboard and be able to use your mouse to write things up. Um, and this is also participants as well. So participants to share whiteboard during a meeting. Uh, this and then allow the, that whiteboard content to be saved. Saved. So this is really useful for if you want them to write and you and see their writing live on a whiteboard while uh, you're presenting your meeting. Uh, it could be math problems, it could be conjugation charts, it could be sentence diagrams, whatever you need it to be. And then when you stop sharing their screen, that whiteboard content gets saved so you can review it later. Okay, nonverbal feedback. This is kind of nice. This is will allow students in the chat window to uh, select certain icons that will alert you uh, to how they're doing. It could be a yes, no, which is nice for polling purposes. It could be a, a raise my hand, I have a question. Uh, they have go faster, go slower icons. They have thumbs up, thumbs down, things of that nature, right? And when they select it, you will see that icon next to their name in the chat window. So uh, this is a really nice way to get their feedback formatively without necessarily requiring it, uh, them to type anything in. All right. All right. So that was the basic. Okay. Advanced. I've enabled breakout rooms. This is a new feature here that I've noticed in Zoom will allow you to take your 30 students that may be uh, congregating for your lesson and you can break them out into an infinite amount of rooms. I don't know if it's infinite, but a, a certain number of rooms. So let's say you have 20 students. You can create 10 rooms and either manually or automatically assign pairs of students to go to those 10 rooms. And now they're in pairs talking with each other just in that Zoom meeting, and then you can uh, control when that room is open or closed. So this is really nice for um, uh, think pair shares prior to coming back to the main group. For foreign or world language, this would be really nice to break them out into small groups or pairs to have them talk. And I believe that you then, the um, you the host, can select any of those rooms to zoom in on them and listen to when they are, what they're speaking about without each room hearing each other. Right. So breakout room, pretty powerful. Haven't really played around with it yet, but test it out. Uh, some other ones here, virtual background. This is nice for, for you, the host, to set a virtual background. This works really well on your iPads. It might work okay on your MacBook Pros. It doesn't work well on my iMac here, but the virtual background, what it does is it eliminates whatever's happening behind you, and it can put up a static image instead. Uh, so really nice if you are presenting at your house and you don't want them to see your messy room. Right, and, and do a virtual background. The next one I have selected is attention tracking. This one's kind of neat. Uh, so if you are requiring your students to be in Zoom, you can see whether or not they have Zoom in focus. So if they leave Zoom and do something else, you'll see that they are not participating in your, your Zoom meeting. Okay, and the last one here is waiting room. So waiting room, if you enable it, will allow you to moderate who is in the room. What will happen is a students will see that once they've joined your room, they'll get a message saying you are now in the waiting room, not the meeting room, but the waiting room, waiting on the host, you, uh, the teacher's approval in order to join the room. And you can edit what that says here, right? So please wait, the meeting host will let you in soon. You could say something along the effects uh, of, um, you know, please wait, Mr. Petito will let you in as soon as you are approved, something like that. Right. And that will allow you to moderate who's in your room when. And you'll see who is wanting to join your room because a little pop up will show up and saying so and so is in the waiting room. And then you can either approve or or cancel. And that's it. All right. So those are the in meeting basic and in meeting advanced settings. And those are all, again, part of the settings and then meeting menu. And these are the only ones you really need to worry about setting uh, off the get go here. I showed you the ones that I prefer, but your class might be run completely differently. So set the ones that make the most sense for you. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. And as always, thanks for watching.